Hello and welcome to Learning and Technology. My name is Frank and I'm glad that you're here. So in this video, we're going to show a little bit of love for our Apple and Mac users. I've been a Mac user for many, many years. I've, I use Mac computers, I use PCs, I use Unix, well Mac is Unix, I use uh, Linux systems. It doesn't matter to me what the platform is, what matters to me is that the learning takes place. Now, predominantly in the world of education and online education and remote teaching, we have three systems that you're going to see used extensively. One will be a Windows PC. The second one will be uh, some form of Apple products, such as an iPad or a Mac computer. And then the third will be a Chromebook using Google services. Now, it's important to understand that when I'm dealing with a Windows machine or an Apple Mac computer, I can often download applications to those platforms, and then I run those applications. So you may see some differences in how those applications run on each of those platforms. And that's what I'll look at here. But it's also important to understand that a lot of applications run through a web browser. So it doesn't matter what platform you have as your operating system. If you're using a browser-based educational tool, it'll work across all platforms in the same way. And I think that's one of the reasons we're seeing more and more companies building uh, web-based platforms uh, for their applications. So, but in this video, I'm gonna specifically look at running uh, on my MacBook. I'm gonna take my MacBook up and we're gonna run Microsoft Teams because I've had a number of subscribers request this. They've said, how do I do this in, in my, on my Mac? How do I do this on my Mac? So today I'm gonna to show you. And if you like videos like this, go ahead and hit the like button and uh, hit subscribe if you want more videos for both Windows and Mac-based environments. Comment down below on anything you'd like to see specifically. And if you're a Windows user and you have some Mac friends, go ahead and share this video with them. And if you're a Mac user and you have some Windows friends, go ahead and share some of my other videos with them. There's something here for everybody. So let's go have a look at Microsoft Teams on a Mac computer. Here I am on my Mac and there's a couple of housekeeping steps that I like to do before I begin working with Teams. The first thing I like to do is go into my system preferences and make sure that my system recognizes my sound device. In my case, I have a USB headset plugged into my Mac. I do recommend that for teaching. It can be a, a very helpful to sort of isolate the noise. But if I'm using my internal speakers, I can do that. And that means any audio will play through my Mac. Because I'm using USB headset, any audio will play through the headphones that I've got on. I can also have it play out to an AirPlay device. And one of the common mistakes I see happen is people will be playing music or a video on their TV and then they'll come to do uh, teaching and then all of a sudden the, the audio is coming out of that TV. It's because they haven't gone into their system settings and made sure that that USB is selected. For input, it's the same thing. I want to make sure that my headset microphone is being used and you can see that it is because as I'm speaking, it's actually showing me the levels. So now that I've got my Mac system settings uh, recognizing the appropriate sound device, I'm going to be able to go into team meetings and I'm going to be able to be heard and I'm going to be able to hear. Now, this being said, that also works in a Windows environment, and I can do a video on that if anybody wants to comment down below, but the idea is make sure your system recognizes your sound device so that Teams can recognize your sound device. So now let's go into Teams. I'm going to go into Safari where I have attempted to log into Teams. Well, let me go into Teams here. So if I go into teams.microsoft.com, and some of this will be blurred out because... Oh, no, actually, it went to try to log in. So here you'll see that it attempted to log me in. Well, it did log me in, in fact, but it's saying, hey, you can use it, but it might not be that great. And it says you should download the app. And I have done that. I do have Teams running down here. But the reason that it's doing this is because this is not a Chromium-based browser, but it is the default browser for Mac. So a lot of students might get this message and they may be looking like this little image here. So going, what's going on? So advise them to download the app, or if they don't want to download the app, then they should use a Chrome-based browser such as Chrome. And if I go into Teams here and sign into my account, see it automatically brings me in because I already pre-signed in and you can see that I'm now part of the team. And in this case here, you can see that I'm participating just as fully as I would. I've got files, I can do calls, calendar, move around from Teams. If I had not yet downloaded the Team app, a download link would appear in this bottom corner. So I would be able to download the app. So there you have a Chromium-based browser and Safari uh, prompting me to download the app. 
if I go into Teams, this is the application that I've installed. In fact, just to clean up a little so I don't get confused, I'm going to close both the browsers and we'll just focus in on the Team app. The Team app has all of the same items that I would have in a Windows environment. All my channels are still there. I can go in and I can look at different apps that I might have available. Now, these apps are dependent upon whether your IT department permits them or not. So let's say, for example, if we're doing coding and I want to do a GitHub app, I can have the GitHub plugin and you can see here I can go into GitHub and I've got a nice GitHub app that's part of this environment. So it's very handy. You can also add new apps in here just like I could in Windows. So for example, if I want to use Poly, which is a polling software, I put this in the, I made a video of this already. So if I go into Poly, what it will ask me to do when I click it is it'll say, do you want to open it? or it'll say install it. So I've actually installed it on my Mac already. Let's find some random app. Now I don't know this app, I just want to show you how you can add it. And if I go to add this here, it'll actually go in and it'll add this app to my environment. Okay, and in fact, uh, it'll probably prompt me up. A couple of my other computers just said, thank you for installing it. So we went in here and we can go into the Alley app. I don't know anything about that app. I just wanted to show you the process of installing. So I'm going to go back to my Teams. I can actually just go back to my astronomy class here. So I'm back into my Teams. Now let's show a meeting. I'm going to do a quick meeting. And so let me go to my other computer as an instructor and start a meeting. So for the purposes of this video, what I've done is I've logged in and I've logged in as Clark Kent. So I'm going to go to my astronomy class and you'll notice that my instructor has a meeting that's started already. Everybody gets to learn astronomy has started and I can join that meeting that I'm joining this on a Mac. So when I go to join this meeting, you'll notice, first of all, you can see me here, right? So I'll turn off the video. You can see my headset. So I'll turn off the video and I have my audio going. So I'm going to keep my audio on because I want to show you that. And you'll notice it's using my USB audio device. Remember when I went into system preferences and I selected that as my system sound, I can also change that to any audio device I want here. So I could say, make that the internal mic and speakers or do a custom setup. This is important and I have another video that I'll be creating showing you how to push different audio through your system. But anyways, for now, I'm going to go in here. You can also do a test call. So I can do a test call and you can change your camera as well. So I have other videos here on how to use your mirrorless or your DLSR LR camera as a webcam. And I do sometimes recommend that for instructors, but for a lot of students, the webcam is just fine. So I'm going to join this meeting. And you can see that even though I'm on a Mac, and I'm just going to go and change my audio here. What's happening is you can hear the echo in the background. So I'm going to mute my audio so that we don't have as much echoey noise. But the idea is that I've got both my video and my audio muted. I can also go into the dots here and I can change my device settings again. So I could change it before I join the meeting and I can change it during the meeting. But I'm fully participating. I can go in. I can share my Mac screen off to that meeting. So whatever my Mac screen is, I can share that to my to the meeting here. You'll notice that I can also go in um, and let me grab it. I have the whiteboard as well, but I did another video where I recommend you use the downloadable whiteboard. I can also raise my hand, still seen. I can go in and do chat. So anything I say, if I say, hello class, this is Clark. That will be seen by everybody. And if I go to my other computer, and they go to their chat as well. They can say, hello, Clark. This is Frank. Okay, so we can see that I'm chatting with the instructor, even though I spelt my own name wrong. Um, so you can see you have all of these options still available. I can also go here. You can see that I'm muted. And if I go here, I can actually pin my name or pin my screen up there if I want to. So you can see that all of the things that I would do in a Windows world, see which participants are here in the meeting, but all of the things I could do on a Windows version of Teams, I can do on a Mac version of Teams. I will now close down that meeting so that we have the meeting over. So I'll leave the meeting and I'm back to my Teams environment.
So I hope that was helpful. It was a very brief well, I guess it took a little bit of time, but I showed you how I could change the sound. I showed you how I could get to Teams, how I could use it in Safari, or better yet, download it, how I could use it in Chrome, or again, better yet, download it. And once I downloaded it, I showed you how I could go into a meeting and participate. It's really quite that simple. So there are a lot of videos I have on working in Microsoft Teams, uh, and they would apply to both the Mac version as well as the Windows version. So check out some of those videos. Well, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I hope all my Mac users are feeling the love. In subsequent videos, I'll use Windows and I'll use Mac. Um, I even have some videos coming up using my iPad and my iPhone. So there are many different ways to help students learn with technology, and those are just some of the more popular ones. Depending on how the channel goes in the future, I might go out and get some other hardware, such as a Chromebook or a Windows Surface. I'd like to play with those and do some videos on those, but we'll have to wait for that. That'll be in the future. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit like and hit the subscribe button if you want more tips and tricks. Comment down below. I'm very responsive or I hope I'm very responsive to comments in terms of content requests. And if you know somebody that could benefit from this video or any of my other videos, go ahead and share it with them. Once again, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next videos.